This is 5-Minute Feng Shui, podcast number 53, Seven Ways to Change Your Life and Luck. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away and usually in about five minutes. Now, let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Okay, so today we're talking all about how to change your life and luck. And we're going to cover seven distinct ways that you can do that. Now, uh, you know, we all know that feng shui is about creating flow and energy and finding balance and all that good stuff and unstopping those blockages. And this is, you know, true for your personal space and your office and your home and well, you. So you have energy or maybe you don't. <laughs> and that energy impacts the way the world responds to you in the form of a career, prosperity, health, wisdom, love, and happiness. So applying feng shui to yourself is just as important as applying it to your home or your office because you are the vessel that transports you through life. Just like your home is your is the vessel that holds you, you are the vessel that holds you. So let's talk about some ideas that will help you feng shui yourself and get your personal feng shui in sync, in harmony, in a, and in a productive and prosperous mode. Number one is subtle change is powerful change. Rather than making a huge sweeping change like losing 50 pounds, just resolve to stop drinking sodas, for example. Or maybe you drink orange juice every morning. I had a habit of eating hard candies all the time because uh, while I was writing, uh, I would just kind of suck on those candies and that would sort of make me ruminate <laughs> like a cow, I guess. And what ha happened was that it packed on the pounds over time. And funny, but I stopped eating hard candies and I dropped five pounds pretty quickly. And I did the same thing with orange juice. I used to have a giant glass of orange juice every morning. Well, that just, you know, is a whole lot of sugar or even if it comes wrapped up in a lot of vitamin C, it's a lot of sugar. I reduced that to about four ounces a day and it made all the difference. But this is just an example of small things that you can do consistently. And they actually, over time, make a huge difference. Like a, a, like a giant cruise ship, if it adjusts its course just by one degree, over time, over months, it will be off course by a thousand miles. So this is the point. Small changes are still powerful. They take less effort, but the reward is still great, as long as you keep at it. So number two is focus on the action, not the goal. So maybe your goal is to lose 50 pounds or maybe to run a marathon, but that puts the focus on the end result, not the action. And this is what counts. Like for instance, a personal hero of mine is a young woman who needed to lose 100 pounds and she did it by running 30 seconds. Yes, take that in, 30 seconds. Every day she ran 30 seconds more than the day before. And at the end of the year, that amounted to about three hours of running. That is enough time to run a marathon. And guess what? She did. And at the end of the year, she had lost more than 100 pounds in that year. And it landed her on national TV. So what small action can you take every day that is action-oriented, not goal-oriented? Remember, her action was 30 seconds of running. And what, the first day she ran 30 seconds, the second day she ran one minute. If you can just do 30 seconds of action every day and build on that, that's the action that can get you to that goal of whatever that is in a year later or six months time, and it really makes a difference. I see that all the time with money, weight, um, even uh, working on, on work projects and, and creative projects. Just do a little bit and focus on that action and you will get to the goal. Okay, number three, 
remove those labels. You know, we all have them, whether they were given to us, imposed on us by teachers or coworkers or siblings, or ones that we've given ourselves. Calling ourselves anything other than a positive statement is such a put down. Get your mental goo remover on and strip away any and all labels that are negative about yourself. Don't repeat them. Don't call other people by labels and correct yourself when you do it. So for instance, you can say, I'm not an exerciser. No, I'm not an exerciser. Maybe you, uh, you need to exercise and you know you are. Stop saying I'm not an exerciser. Say, yeah, I get up every day. One of the people I admire a lot is my own mom, actually. She... Uh, was a smoker and decided that she wanted to stop smoking and she went to a hypnotist and because she really wanted to that that hypnot that hypnosis really worked on her but she would always she would never say I quit smoking she'd always say I'm a non-smoker that puts the emphasis on the positive so remove any negative labels I quit smoking or I don't exercise or I'm stupid or I can't I never can you know, talk on a, uh, do public speaking and that kind of thing. Take those labels away and just kind of shift into neutral about your thinking if you have to. And try not to judge other people. Every time we have a, a label and a judgment, it, it weighs us down, even when we're doing it about other people. It, it's, it takes a little bit from us too. All right, number four, move the chi and turn left. Now, you need to be challenged and a great way to stretch yourself is by rearranging your furnishings. So position the sofa in a new direction. Put your bed on another wall, just making sure it's always in the command position that you can see it, see the door, or simply change some of the accessories in your house, or switch out all the pictures and other decorating objects. What it does is it causes you to sit in a new way, see in a new way, and be affected by the placement, the new placement, because now you notice those changes and you notice those things. And when you start noticing things in your home, you start being more aware in your life. Now let's talk about that turning left portion. Now to start your life going in a new direction, I want you to take a walk that starts by making three left turns. So make that walk daily for a month and see what happens. Uh, and this is something that I've done many times when I, I just needed a, a fresh start or I needed to go in a new direction. Maybe luck wasn't working. Uh, maybe I had um, a kind of a run of you know, things that weren't positive for me or things that uh, I felt like were negative, uh, some, some, you know, unfortunate incidents happened. And so what I did, I wanted to change my luck. I wanted to change that, that chi where my life was going. And so what I would do is I would go out my front door and I'd turn left. I'd walk until I could take another left and I'd walk until I could take another left. And that is amazing how it can re kind of like reset. It's almost like, did you ever see that old movie with Superman where he actually made the world turn the other way and he, <laughs> he made time go backwards. It's kind of like that. It's like a little reset for your life. So when you want to make a change personally, this is a really great way to do that. Now, obviously, I'm a, I'm a fan of getting your body moving. When we feel stuck and challenged, I'm, I'm such a huge believer in vitamin X. If you need something different, we need to move your body and start the chi moving in you. So get that vitamin X, get out, get moving. Uh, the vitamin X is vitamin exercise, right? Uh, walk, do an exercise tape, you know, put on your YouTube and watch, you know, somebody do uh, push-ups or sit-ups or whatever, anything just to get your body moving. Because when you get your internal chi revved up by getting going, it starts moving things. All of a sudden, things become unstuck. So what are we going to do? We're going to, number four, I'm going to go back over that real quickly. Move the chi and turn left. So we're going to change things around in our house. We're going to move furniture around, maybe take the pictures down, put them in new places. And then we're going to start our life going in a new direction by, by going somewhere and starting a walk by turning left with three turns. Don't go left, then right, then left. No, left, left, left. You gotta make three left turns. And it and what it does is it kind of shifts your perspective. Because in most people have our right foot dominant, right hand dominant, but there's um the left side of the body is a receiving side. And so we want to receive something new. And by making those three left turns, you're gonna start something new. 
All right, number five, learn something. What do you want to learn? Maybe it's a new software program, a language, a hobby. Learning is a great way to get your internal energy growing and your chi unstuck. If you can't think of anything, just use your computer keyboard differently. Learn some new keyboard sh shortcuts for browsing the internet or put a CD in your car stereo and learn a new language. Uh, okay, I know, I'm totally dating myself. All right, download an app like Babbel <laughs> to learn a new language. I think that's a really terrific, uh, terrific, way to to start some new energy in your life and do something new. Um, one of the reasons I love Success Magazine, uh, I used to subscribe to it, I haven't subscribed to it in a long time, uh, is because it came with a CD every month. And each each CD would cover an area about different types of success. And so I, it really kept me motivated. I'd listen to them in the car and I'd come away inspired, enthusiastic. And I'd often make modifications to my li life based on what I hear. Uh, this is a really, you know, we have a powerful time right now. Uh, you're listening to a podcast you're listening to me right now. Chances are you wanted to learn something new. You wanted to do something new. You needed something new to happen, right? Um, we're all like that. We all, you know, from time to time we get in our ruts and we need something new to happen. And just by listening to this podcast and maybe trying something new, maybe go to the, uh, your local Starbucks and order coffee you would never, ever, ever <laughs> drink and just do something different. I think it makes a huge difference when you do that thing that's different and you learn something. You go, okay, so I don't like chai latte cappuccinos, <laughs> you know, but you learn something and that's what's great. And thanks for listening to this podcast because I really think uh, listening to them is very inspiring. I listen to them all the time when I'm out and about walking. Okay, number six, change your energy and you change your luck. Analyze where all your energy or your lack of energy is going. Is it supporting you and helpful? Chances are if your energy is dragging or you're plodding along in one area and crazy busy in another, you need to kind of get some balance again. So try reversing these and putting more energy where um, your life isn't going along as rapidly as you might like focus on that area. Let's say it's an area like money. You want you want to have more money. So focus on that. How can you get more money? Maybe you could teach a class. You can offer to, to do something on the side, get a side job. Uh, maybe you can clean out your closet and sell, sell some clothes or, I mean, gosh, there's all kinds of online, um, you know, consignment stores where you can, you can actually rake in some cash. You know, Put the emphasis where you're, where you feel like your energy is slow or things are going too slow and put extra attention there. And when things are really crazy, maybe pull back a little, you know, like for instance, if you're going nuts in the morning, trying to get ready for work, waking, you know, getting the kids ready and all the stuff that you have to do, try waking up a little earlier and getting going slowly. I really think that makes a huge difference. I know when um, you get out of bed and you're frenetic from the moment one your feet hit the floor, that gets your day off, I think, to a bad start. I like to start my day off slowly. I love my coffee time. I, I have I have a cup of coffee leisurely in the morning. I drink, I, I re drink my coffee. I read my Wall Street Journal. And then I go get dressed. And then I am ready to, to Zoom because I've, ha I've kind of eased into my day. Give yourself the time to kind of ease in instead of, you know, getting sl sloshed with the ice bucket of cold water first thing when you're getting ready. Now, think about things too, like if you're dragging your feet on a project, why not get in there and really knock it out and put in a ton of energy into it and get it done? Uh, I bet you'd see a huge difference in your life if you had a slower start and a faster finish instead of the other way around. Think about that. Slow start, faster finish. Let's uh, really put in uh, lots of energy into whatever whatever is dragging in your life. Really focus on it, and then um, you know, give yourself a little extra time uh, in the morning if it, if you're going crazy in the morning trying to get out the door and that kind of thing. Give yourself a little bit more time. It's interesting how those two oppositionally they're I know they're they're sort of opposed, but it's amazing how those two can make a difference. All right, don't tolerate annoyances. This is number seven. Annoyances are a drain on us. That's like losing our life one drop of blood at a time. How many little things do you tolerate? Really, day in and day out, what is it that constantly grates on your nerves? And the next question is, 
why don't you fix it? I mean, like right now. I mean, get up and fix that thing that is bothering you. If it's that 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 paint that's peeling in the corner, sand. Get there with your your uh, paper, your sandpaper. Sand it down, prime it, and slap some paint on it. Really, what would it take you? Fifteen minutes, but you've been looking at that for how many weeks or months or years, and never uh, never getting that finished. You know that is a drain on your spirit. It's a drain on your psyche. It's a drain on your your energy. It's always, it's, it's just a fact that if you make it your habit to fix anything and everything that bugs you as soon as you notice, notice it, you're going to have so much more energy. You're going to feel so much better. Then you get to really focus on your life and not on dumb things like that stain on the carpet or that, that coffee spill on the sofa. You know, get your OxyClean in there and get it out. You know, when we ignore little annoyances, we block the little surprises and sweet things that can happen to us because we don't let that, we don't have all that petty stuff blocking us. So instead of walking past that pile of papers or putting up with the tag and the sweater that's scratching, you fix it. Fix it now. <laughs> like they said on the skit in Saturday Night Live live with Kenan Thompson. I love that, that skit, Fix It Now. Then watch when, as you start eliminating little uh, things that are dragging your energy down, and it can be anything from just that shirt in the closet you love, but it's got a gravy stain on it, and it's never coming out, and every time you look at it, you go, I really love that shirt, but it's got the gravy stain. It's like somehow it's like hanging on to that is like, it's like that painful reminder is sort of like pushing on a bruise. It's like, it's you, we get to where we kind of like that. That's not good. Don't tolerate that. Just ditch that blouse. Throw it in the trash. No, don't don't donate it unless you think somebody can actually get that thing out. <laughs> right? But don't tolerate those annoyances. It's amazing how much more you will enjoy life when you have things that aren't always vying for your attention and in a negative way. So let's talk, go over the three really quick tips uh, that I have uh, for you today about how to change your life and luck. Number one really is so important and that is making small changes. Making really small changes like, you know, adding uh 50 setups in the morning to your to your routine. You might be amazed at how your stomach will flatten out in a month. Or maybe it's that you uh, you cut down that orange juice or just drop that soda. Maybe maybe Friday night is your soda night or Saturday you have a soda or something like that. Drop those those or make those small drop those bad habits, especially if you can drop uh, a bad habit, but make small changes. They can really add up and make a big difference over the long term. Number two is remember to always focus on the action, not the goal. Because like the example that I used with the woman who ran 30 seconds a day, her goal was 100 pounds. But she ended up changing her goal from 100 pounds, losing 100 pounds, to just running 30 seconds. That's a whole lot more manageable, isn't it? I think I can do something for 30 seconds more than I can drop 100 pounds today. But today I can run 30 seconds. See what I mean? That's really important. Focus on the actions that you're taking. And the goal will take care of itself. Lastly, remove your judgment. If you find that you're criticizing yourself internally, you're that, that inner talk is very negative, you're judging, you're judging yourself, you're judging other people, you're labeling yourself, oh, that's stupid, or oh, I'm so, you know, I have, you know, I, I'm not dedicated enough, I'm procrastinating, remove those labels. And if you're procrastinating on something, work on it right that second, right then. And then it's amazing what that'll do. Just removing those labels from yourself. And it really frees yourself and lifts your, your spirit and it can change your personal energy. And you'll move away from being the person that doesn't exercise or procrastinates or whatever the habit is. And you'll make yourself in t and, and, and see yourself in a new way and make yourself uh, much more open to a life that has pleasant surprises, nice things that can happen. And you open your way for wonderful surprises and uh, a nice uh, opportunities that you would have missed because you were focused on your annoyances, you're focused on in, uh, huge goals that seem insurmountable, and you'd be uh, worrying about some label that you stuck on yourself. If you can If you can focus on those small things and removing labels and focusing on the action, those three tips, I guarantee you, you're going to see some 
change and a shift in your life and luck. All right. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoy today's five minute feng shui. It's really, these are, these are tips that I have used and I've changed my life and created a business that I love, that I love and a life that I love, uh, just by making those a commitment to those simple things. All right. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you on the next five minute feng shui. Thanks for listening today to 5-Minute Feng Shui. Be sure to join me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Feng Shui Katie. And if you're really ready to move ahead quickly, head over to redlotusletter.com and sign up for my free four-week e-course, 28 Days to Prosperity. You'll get daily lessons and tips on how to get unstuck and create financial flow in your life. Make it a fantastic day.